I mean, I grew up in a church. I got, you know, I got saved in a particular church. This is the doctrine. Well, then I started fellowship with a different church. Well, I visited the church, and then they had another doctrine. And then I, I, uh, God led me to become a, a member of a different church, and then they had a doctrine. And so then what we do is we say, well, doctrine is not important. You know, it's, it's, it's the ultimate plural, pluralistic trick because when you say everything is true, then nothing is true. So, so, so it becomes, if this group has got the, the right doctrine, which is different than this group, and they're both telling the truth, which is different than this group, then you, then you almost get back to a point where it, it makes sense to say doctrine doesn't matter. And, and, but, 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 but here's the problem. The problem with that, if doctrine doesn't matter, then why worry about it? If it doesn't matter. If it doesn't matter, then we can, then we can say, well, you know what? You can believe what you want to believe, and I can believe what I want to believe, and let's not worry about it. But we have to look. I want to just share a few more scriptures with you, and then we're going to get into some things. I want to share, you know, because when I look into the Word of God again and again, the Word of God talks about doctrine, 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 doctrine. The, excuse me, the, the importance of doctrine. Now, uh, let's look at 2 Timothy 3.10. The Apostle Paul is writing to his son in ministry. The implication is that's his son in ministry. He referred to him as a son. And, uh, you know, so 2 Timothy 3.10. Now, I'm not telling you that our denominational doctrine, maybe we might need to stop arguing about that. I think that might be a good idea. But the biblical doctrines, we better, not, we better not throw away. See, because, now, for example, uh, I could have been, in a, as a church doctrine, let's say, as we start other churches, I say, all churches, in all of our churches, we must have blue chairs. Well, that's just a doctrine we got. We don't need blue chairs to be saved. We don't need blue chairs to be Christians. We don't need blue chairs to live for the Lord. That's just what we like. We want blue chairs. But so if we're not careful, we'll start elevating blue chairs up. We walk into a church and they've got green chairs. Oh my gosh, none of these people are saved. <laughs> well, that would be ridiculous. But sometimes I think that's what we've done. And so since we said, let's not argue over blue chair, green chair doctrine, then we don't even want to defend any biblical doctrine. And then, and that's the problem. Because we've still got to be able to go to the word of God if we're born again, if we say we're Christians, we need to be able, no matter what kind of church we grew up in, there, there is a standard that all of us can come together and agree on and say, this is what we believe and this is what we teach. And if we don't have that, then we need to find that. And if we can't find it, then we're in trouble. So look right here at 2 Timothy. I did tell you 2 Timothy um, 3.10, right? Okay, 2 Timothy 3.10. Here's what it says. Now, this is so uh, important. This is so important. He says, but thou, he's talking to, the apostle Paul is talking to Timothy. He said, but thou hast known fully my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, Charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Now, I want you to understand that this is important. He said, you've known my doctrine. Anybody that's uh, uh, attended church, that I'm, you, you know my doctrine. I don't hide it. I don't spring it on you. Gotcha. You know, it's, it's, it's right out here. It's in all the preaching and all the teaching. The manner of life. My goal is to live it. Now, not to live somebody else's doctrine, but to live this, what I see in the word of God. Now, now, see, now, now you got to understand something. Um, you know, because somebody says they're a Christian doesn't mean that they are. You must be born again. You must be. Well, I'm about ready to take off on, a, on another 
the thing here. Let's, let's, let's drop down to another verse here. Drop down to the 16th verse. It says all scripture. Everybody say all scripture. All scripture. Is there anything left out of all? <clears throat> so is Old Testament part of the all? Yes. Is New Testament part of the all? Yes. Are the gospels part of the all? Yes. So when you say all, all brings balance. If you pull something out of context without an interpreting it within the light of what other scriptures say, you may find yourself uh, confused or even worse than that, holding and standing very strongly on something that's not a doctrine of Christ because you pull it out of context. It's easy to pull it out of context. And if we're not careful, we'll be lazy. That's why he says, study to show thyself approved a workman that needeth not be ashamed. Rightly divided. And so the implication there is if, if he's telling us to rightly divide, that means we can do what? Wrongly divide. And we got to be able to rightly divide. Why? Because he said here in the 16th verse, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. For doctrine. Now the Bible doesn't say anything whether we should have blue chairs or green chairs. Right? So now we may say we want blue chairs. But that doesn't mean that the church across the town that has green chairs is out of order. That's just a prerogative. We wanted blue chairs. That's what we got. The other church wanted green chairs. That's what they got. Just like, for example, you could go in, 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 in all over this nation, and some churches have big, beautiful steeples on their building. What does that mean? That if you don't have a steeple on your building, it's not a church? Now, in some denominations, if they build a church, there's going to be a steeple on it. We're not against steeples. We're just saying that's not a biblical doctrine. Thus, therefore, that whenever you have thou buildest a building, make it sure it has a steeple on it. No. Not a, that's, not a, that's not a Bible doctrine. But here's, what, here's our problem. We declare war and fall out with each other based on steeples. Based on color of chairs. Here's one. Based on style of music. Isn't that something? We have a doctrine. Let's not have... I mean, in some churches, you can't have music. In other churches, you can have like a piano and an organ, but you better not have any drums. You know. Boy, they would have a fit if they went to that church and went to that time, and the lady had some cymbals up in there, boy. Crash! Crash! You know. You know. Right? Now, why am I talking about this? Because, see, what we need to understand is we have to be careful when we say, let's not fight over doctrine. We, might, we, we, we don't need to go to war over doctrine that's not biblically based. But we have to be careful that we hold on to biblically based doctrine or we become something other in manifestation than the body of Christ. What does he say? It's given by inspiration for doctrine, for reproof. In other words, we need to reprove it. And sometimes a reproving comes when we're corrected. In other words, a, it's a strong reproving something. You know that's not the word. You know this is what the, the word of God says. What else did he say? For correction. Well, if we don't have doctrine, how can we know we're right or wrong? How can we know? Let's say, for example, if I'm giving you some directions to get to the hospital here in Wilmington. And so I, you know, I give you some directions, and so I write them all down. And so, and so in the process of writing them down, Sister Peggy, she happens to be glancing at them because we're it's no secret. And she says, "Wait a minute, you can't get there. If you go that way, you're not going to go." She's just saying we need to correct these instructions because we've got some instructions. Because that word doctrine really means instruction. To be instructed. So what are we going to do? Put her out of the conversation? Because she's bringing correction? Well, it seems to me that's what we want to do in the body of Christ. We don't want any correction. We want to do it how we want to do it. I've had people say stuff like this to me. They say, well, that's what you, all you, all you people, y'all always use that scripture. Huh? Because there was, a, there was a doctrinal difference. I said, well, the Bible says this, and it says that, and it says that, and it says that. They said, that's what's wrong. Y'all people always go to that scripture. I said, well, well, I'm um, isn't that what I'm supposed to do? 
Say, say we're, we're having a discussion and, and, and we don't know what the answer is. Or maybe I say something that's different than what you think it should be and, or you're saying something I think is different. We, we got to go to the book. We can't just say, well, I, I said it louder, so I'm right. Or, or I have a title, so I'm right. Or I belong to this traditional long-standing denomination, so therefore I'm right. Or, or because um, we've got a bishop, that means, we, that means I'm right. Or, or we've got 50 bishops, that means I'm right. No, the standard is the word of God. Because we're, we're told here in, uh, by the apostle Paul that the word of God um, is given by inspiration and is profitable for doctrine. So now what I have to do, for example, so um, uh, Sister Peggy, she, go, she works at the hospital, so she goes there every day, so that means that she might know with a pretty good, accurate degree where the hospital is. She might really know. So, so we might need to say, well, uh, let's see what she says. Well, because, because you see, it's correcting us. Now the instructions are corrected. Now we can get to the hospital. If we ignore the standard, the person that's going on a regular basis, now we can't even get there. We, well, the authority in this case would be me. Yeah, the pastor said this is how you go. Well, we have somebody that's not on a level in the church as a pastor that had the right answer. So we need to take that correction. Well, the same thing with the word of God. We got to go to the word of God and say, what is the, what is the correct vision? What's the, what's the, what's, what way should we be doing? Why? Because it's there for correction. And then it, then it goes so far and says this, instruction, the word of God, doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness. Boy, don't we need that? Okay, let me prove it to you. How many of you have, uh, and, and, you know, uh, you don't have to raise your hand, but I want you to think about it. How many of you have messed up and did something that you shouldn't have done since you've been saved, whether you did it on purpose or you did it in the ignorance? You did something you, you now know you shouldn't have done since you've been saved. Everybody. So we got to go back to the word and say, well, that's what the word says. I didn't see that before. Or I didn't get that before. Nobody told me. Listen, there were things that I remember when I first got saved, things that I, that I was doing that I didn't know I shouldn't have done. If somebody did something wrong to me, I'd get them back. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> I mean, you know, you know that's wrong. That's wrong. Somebody, somebody gossip about me, I gossip about them back. That's wrong. I remember uh, not long ago, well, it's long ago, long time ago now, maybe 10, 15 years, some people were saying some stuff about me. It wasn't true, but I know the truth about them. I wanted to tell everybody. I wanted to say, for example, say they, they, they told Sister Peggy. I wanted to go and say, Sister Peggy, you can't believe that liar. Let me tell you what they did. They did this. They did this. They did this. And I got three or four witnesses that can bear witness just what they did. That's what I wanted to do. But I got some doctrine. I got some doctrine that corrects me, that tells me I can't just do that. I, oh, oh, Lord, I, that, you, you just can't believe. Sometimes I would just be praying and praying and praying because I'm this close to violating the word. I want to do it so bad. I want to do it so bad. I want to do it so bad. I want to do, ooh, ooh. I know that thing. Yes, sir, you just want to get this thing. But, you, but, but now what happened is the word of God that's inspired the scripture that's inspired by God is given unto us for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction. So now I got to keep my mouth shut. Pray day in the morning time. But if I hold my peace, God will fight my battles. But if I open my mouth, then I got to fight my battle. And I might not be strong enough to fight this battle. I may not be able to handle this battle. Because you don't really know sometimes what's arrayed against you. All you know is what you want to do in the natural. 
but now you set some other things in motion that you didn't intend to set in motion, but they're in motion. And the only way they get stopped, you have to repent. You got to turn from it. You got to say, God, forgive me. And a lot of times we don't want to do that. Now, the reason why is this so important? Because when we start saying doctrine is not important, we're setting ourselves up to become an expression of something other than the body of Christ. That's why, you know, at one point the scripture says, will, will, um, will the Lord find faith when he returns? Sometimes preaching and teaching on, on faith is almost a bad word to people. Man, I don't believe that faith. I don't believe that. I don't believe that faith thing. I don't believe. Well, what you gonna do with all them scriptures? Just, just start going through the Bible and just snatch them on out, snatch those pages out. I reckon. No, you can't do that. You got to come back to the Word of God. Amen. Now, uh, listen, listen over here to um, 2 Timothy uh, four three. Listen what it says. Second Timothy four three. And then we're gonna get, we're gonna get. You know, I always like to go into some scriptures so you'll understand why it's important principle of doctrine is so important. It says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. They won't endure sound doctrine. What will they endure? What will they embrace? But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers. You know, you can heap to yourself a teacher that will teach you things contrary to the word of God. Have an itching ear. Sound doctrine. See the see the, the the challenge with sound doctrine. Now let me show you. Let me show you uh, why sound doctrine sometimes is rejected in, in in my estimation. See, sometimes I may reject sound doctrine because I just want to correct Sister Peggy. I don't want no correction. See, as long as I can find a scripture to show what's wrong with the Minister Sherry. What's wrong with Sister Peggy? What's wrong with Brother Evan Duke? What's wrong with Elder Bombolino? What's wrong with Sister Kayla? What's wrong with Deaconess Todd? As long as I can find scripture that point out what's wrong with them, you see, if I'm not careful, I can get over here where my doctrine is not sound because I'm not dealing with me. So, so I may be looking at somebody through a jaundiced eye. In other words, I'm looking at them and judging them. And listen, uh, uh, they may be running with all they know. But you see, now I got to get the attention off of me. I don't want nobody to know what I did and how I did it. So I got to go and, 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 and put something on this one and put something on that one. Because now, and see, that's unsound doctrine. Because what that does is I'm not, I'm not growing. I'm not benefiting. I'm not, I'm not being, see, see, the, see, sound doctrine will, biblical doctrine will bring division in this sense. It will divide the truth from the error. When people embrace uh, living contrary to the will and the word of God, and you begin to bring sound doctrine, they'll say, you're not walking in love. But that's not the correct teaching on walking in love. I mean, you can find, again, Jesus rebuked people. You see the Apostle Paul rebuking people. I remember one time, the Apostle Paul got so upset, he said, John Mark couldn't even come on a, come on a crusade with me. He said, what? Yeah. See, because, and one of the, and see, one of, one of the reasons that this is important is because if we're not careful, we can find ourselves weakening the influence of the body of Christ because we refuse to move into sound doctrine. What we want to do is we just want to have our way. Just want to have my way. Instead of have your way, we say have my way. Have my way. <laughs> we just want to have our way. But I can't have my way. I got to go and find out what the word of God says about it. Okay? So now let's see. Now, now uh, that's kind of like the intro and we're going to get it, spend another few minutes. Oh, man, we're running out of time. I think we talked about repentance from dead works. We talked about faith towards God, right? 
Because look over here at Hebrews 6, 1 and 2. Hebrews 6, 1 and 2. And sometimes, you know, you get into this and you can, it's so rich that you, you know, you, you, time flies. Because he says, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. There's some doctrines, there's some foundational doctrines of Christ that we as Christians need to embrace. Let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, faith towards God, the doctrine of baptisms, laying on of hands, and of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. Judgment is a prerogative of the things of God. We're supposed to judge, and we will be judged eternally in the things we've done in this body, in this life. Now, the beautiful thing about being a Christian is you can confess it as sin and be cleansed from all unrighteousness. You don't, have to, you don't have to go and be judged from the perspective of receiving punishment for what sin you've committed. You can be washed away by the blood of Jesus. But that's so powerful. That's what it means when it says faith toward God. We come to God by faith. I think one of our greatest challenges, this is a Tony McGeeism, I suppose, but I think it's biblical, is is we don't really like to we don't really like to talk about you must be born again. You must be. You must be born again. We like to say things, well, they're a good person. I mean, they're a good person. They might be a good person, but are they born again? And if they're born again, are they pressing in to be a disciple? Well, first thing we got to do is look at these sound doctrines. Amen? Amen? Faith towards God. I kind of I talked a little bit about faith towards God last time, but I want to kind of uh, uh, deal in this. Here's what it says in Hebrews. This is why this doctrine, this particular doctrine of the body of Christ is so important. It says, for without faith, Hebrews, Hebrews 11, 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. So when you throw faith away, you're not even in a position to please God. Now, some people are walking by faith. They've accepted salvation by faith because they were taught that. But you see, you can, you can now hear somebody teaching faith and say, well, I don't really want any part of that because you now associated with a particular group. And you don't want to be a part of that group. Well, for a minute, forget about it's that group. And think about it, it's that word. Hebrews 11, 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So that means that we got we to gotta have faith. And we got to have faith toward God. We got to have faith for salvation. For by grace are you saved through what? Faith. Faith is there. So again and again, we see this word faith. So let's not, let's not get caught up in the idea that maybe a particular group doesn't like the teaching of faith. Let's see what the Bible says. There may be somebody that's teaching faith outside of the bounds of what the word of God teaches. That's, listen, that's human nature. If something can be messed up, a human being will mess it up. We'll do that. Isn't that right? But that doesn't mean that faith in and of itself is wrong. That doesn't mean that God doesn't want us to walk by faith. Matter of fact, one scripture, it's about three or four scriptures, says, for the just, those that are justified by the blood of Jesus, shall live by faith. So that means we got to live by it. So that's an important doctrine. You say, well, I don't like the way this one taught it. Well, get over yourself. Now, you might be right. Maybe they taught it wrong. But don't just set it aside like it doesn't matter. Get into the Bible and see what it says. The just shall live by faith. Matter of fact, if you look over at, at, at Romans 10, 17, look over Romans 10, 17 right quick. This is an important doctrine. In the body of Christ. We got this. We got to have this. We got to walk in this. 10.17. It says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 
The more word of God you hear, the more faith comes. When faith comes, now you and I, you and I need to act on it in order to produce something. But you can't just say, well, I don't like it because the Reverend Dr. So-and-so taught about it, or the Reverend Dr. So-and-so, or this group right here taught about it, or that group there taught, well, I'm not going to have anything to do with it. Well, see, now you're violating a principle of what I would refer to as, as progressive restoration to the body of Christ that God started way back when he raised up Martin Luther. Salvation is by faith alone. I mean, before, before Martin Luther nailed his, his theses on the wall, now it wasn't something unusual. They would, you know, they didn't have internet and all that, but they could send somebody an email and say, look, check this out. This is what we're going to talk about tonight. They would nail it on the door, and anybody walking by the door, they would know, well, these are the topics that are going to be discussed when we get together. So that's why he nailed them, and he talking about salvation by, by grace and faith alone. You can't, in other words, you can't earn it. Well, what had happened is corruption had entered into the body of Christ, and, and corruption, people were buying their salvation. So you come in, um, Sister Peggy, and I say, okay, that'll be $500. You can get saved, $500. We got, now, 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 Gene, it's going to take you 2500 because you really need to be saved. And, and, and see, now, 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 the reason, now you got to understand that when, when he looked at that, he started saying that there's something wrong with this. So what, so what God did was God used him to reintroduce this foundation back to the body of Christ. And so here, here we see Jesus says, he said, uh, with the Apostle Paul talking about this, he said, he said, let's not relay the foundation, but in order for us not to relay it, we've got we to have a certain degree of mastery. Number one, repentance from dead works. Number two, faith toward God. So if, we, if, 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 if that's a doctrine, it doesn't matter whether you're Baptist, Presbyterian, Pentecostal, word of faith, Methodist, CME, United Methodist, whatever, faith toward God is a biblical doctrine that you, regardless of your label, need, and you need to study it. You got to have it. Why? It's the foundational doctrine for all Christians. Now, it's okay if you have the blue carpet kind of church or the green carpet kind of church. But you got to find out what the doctrines from the biblical perspective are, and then you we 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 got to get them. Now, one of the reasons one of the reasons I think that that, that we're growing weak, the reason that we're growing, in my my estimate, the, re, the reason that we're growing weak is because we have so much so much blue carpet, green carpet um, doctrine that we declare war over the blue carpet, green carpet doctrine because we don't know the doctrine of the church. We just know what each individual man wants. See, so I'm, I'm Tony McGee. I like blue chairs. And Reverend Dr. Somebody else like green chairs. So now we go to visit, we go check their church out, and we tell somebody say, well, they got a special meeting going to so-and-so, but don't go over there because, you know, they got green chairs. Green chairs is of the devil. I'm using that as an example to illustrate a point. But I'm, I'm using that so we understand how silly it is. What we have to do is we have to come and say, now what does the Bible talk about? Blue chairs. Nothing. Doesn't say nothing about it. Now what does the Bible say about faith? It says the second doctrine is we must have faith toward God. Matter of fact, if you look over in Matthew 11, uh, uh, Matthew 11, he said, he said, he said, we have to have faith. We must have the faith of God, a faith in God. Don't worry too much about the prepositional phrase right now, but, but we see that there's faith in God, our faith in God, our faith of God. And he tells us how to walk by faith. You say, well, I don't believe that. Well, then you're throwing away an important doctrine. Of the church. Matter of fact, another point it talks about putting on the whole armor of God. What does it, what, what does it say about faith? It calls faith. It says the shield of faith. 
So what does a shield do? A shield protects you. Shield protects you. So that means if we ignore the second doctrine, we can't even use the shield. We can't even get the protection of faith. And what does faith do? Now this is where, this is where you lose people. Faith calls those things that be not as though they were. Now, this is a spiritual function. This is not an emotional function. This is not something that you can just do and play a game. It has to become a lifestyle. One day I was talking to somebody, just as a side, and we're going to wrap up in a minute. I was talking to somebody, and they were saying about how, you know, they wouldn't want to go someplace because they'd be afraid to go, and they hope God never tells them to go and because they will be afraid. And I said, well, listen, if you can't go in faith, don't go. In other words, what you need to do is you need to get, you need to get, you need to get this settled between you and God first. So when you go, you're going in faith. Because if you go in fear, you may be opening up an attack of the enemy against your life, against your sanity, against your health. Because you're not walking by faith, you're walking in fear. And when you understand what fear is, fear is the expectation of the curse being manifested versus the expectation of a blessing being manifested. It's really that simple, but it's still an expectation. And if you think about it, the person walking by faith is picturing in their mind what's going to happen. They're picturing in their mind what's going to come forth. They're picturing based on something they've heard, something they've got in their heart. The person in fear is picturing what's going to happen. They stay up at night worried about it. person in faith might stay up at night thinking about, boy, look what the Lord has done. Glory to God, look at this blessing right here. And the person in in fear, stay up, oh my, what, what am I going to do, what am I going to do, what am I going to do? So what we want to do is we want to make sure that no matter what's going on, we're looking into the word of God and saying, you know what? I got to walk this thing out. I got to walk this thing out every day. You say, well, I don't really understand that faith stuff. Well, you're watching too much television. You got a big old Bible. And even, and, and how, how many people here, you, you have a good smartphone? How many people, raise your hand, you got a real good smartphone. You can download concordances. You can download Bibles. I have a Bible that, that I put on my phone. It's called the Touch Bible. Now, the reason I like it is because I can look at a scripture, and, it, and it'll highlight strong concordance words in the scripture, and I can just push that. You know, with my, with my, you know how you, you, you select it, and it'll show me what that word means. I don't even have to, I don't even have to guess. It'll show me just what that word is. Now, I like the other one is because it'll read the Bible to me. You know, when you're brushing your teeth, you, I got a little a Wi-Fi thing. I got it for Christmas a couple of years ago, and it says right in the bathroom. And I'll turn the Bible on sometime and push it and turn that on, and it'll pick it up. And while I'm brushing my teeth or getting ready to take a shower, it'll just be reading the Bible to me. Just reading it. Getting that word. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm not, I won't listen to music. That doesn't mean I won't watch television. I, that, what it means is I want to get as much word in me as I can. Sometimes I need word. Sometimes I turn the radio off and put the, and put the Bible on because I need some word. Anybody ever felt like, you know, you felt like, you know, you was feeling kind of carnal? Anybody ever felt carnal before? I mean, you know, you just feel like, man, people getting on my nerves or temptation or whatever. But put the Bible on. And don't just put any on, put on something to strengthen you in that area. To strengthen you in that area. Why, why do you want to do that? So that you won't fall. So that you'll stand. We got to walk by faith. The second doctrine is we got to walk by faith. Repentance from dead works. Don't, you, don't think you're going to earn your way. You can't earn your way in. You must be born again. Now, once you're born again, the works that you and I need to be involved in doing that come by faith. This is a foundational, this is a foundational doctrine for the believer. We got to walk by faith. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and uh, I tell you what you do. Everybody, sit right there for a second and just worship the Lord. Just sit right there and worship. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we give you praise. 